All right, what I want to talk about here is uh, how you will be asked to evaluate trig ratios uh, given a point on a coordinate plane. And the way that you do this, it's all the same, but I'm going to show you uh, a couple of differences or a couple of examples based on which quadrant the point falls in. Okay, so let's take a look at an angle who's, uh, where the point lies in quadrant one, and you're asked to evaluate all the trig ratios of that angle. Okay, so when you, when you begin this, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to plot the point, and you're going to sketch the angle. Okay, so we plotted our point here. When you sketch an angle, you sketch it in standard position, which means the initial side is the positive x-axis, and then the terminal side is going to pass through that point. Okay, so there's step one. Okay, once you draw in your angle, what you're then going to do is you're going to construct a right triangle. as a reference. Okay, and this uh, right triangle is just going to be uh, constructed by drawing in a vertical line from the point to the x-axis. Okay, and this is, all, this is very consistent. This is always what you're going to do. So from the given point, you're just going to draw a vertical line straight down to the x-axis. And the the reference angle that you're going to use here is going to be the angle formed at the, the origin. Okay, so the angle at the origin is your reference angle. Okay, so this is the angle that we're looking for right here. Okay, once you construct this right triangle, what you're going to do is you're going to label the information based on the coordinates of its point. Okay, so if the x-coordinate is 3, that means this leg has a length of 3. If the y-coordinate is 2, that means this other leg has a y-value or a length of 2. Once you find those two pieces of information, you're then going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing piece. Find the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always going to be measured as a positive number. And no matter which quadrant it's in, it's always going to be positive. So when we look at this problem right here, we would take uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared is equal to c squared. And we'd solve. So 4 plus 9 equals c squared. 13 is equal to c squared. Extract that square root. And we get our solution root 13. Okay, the final step now after you find all the pieces of this right triangle labeled is what we've done in the first sections, which is now to evaluate the trig ratios. Okay, so when we go through and evaluate these, we have the sine, cosine, tangent, and all the reciprocal ratios, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so and this is this should be no different than what you did on your quiz or what we've done in the last few sections. Okay, when you look at your sine, again we're looking at SOHCAHTOA. So our sine is two over root thirteen, but instead of writing it in this form, remember you have to rationalize the denominator, and to do that, dividing by a radical is the same as multiplying by that radical and dividing by the number that's inside the radical itself. So 2 divided by root 13 is just 2 root 13 over 13. Okay, so that would be your sine. Your cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over root 13. Again, rationalize this. Dividing by root 13 is the same as multiplying by root 13 and dividing by 13. So there's our cosine. And then the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 2 over 3. It doesn't need to be simplified any further. And now the reciprocal ratios are what some of you guys are experiencing some difficulty with because you're trying to take the reciprocal of the simplified form. So in this instance, the sine and the cosine, if you try to take the reciprocal of these forms that are boxed off, it's a much more difficult task than taking this, the reciprocal of the form before you simplify it. 
Because if you take the reciprocal of 2 over root 13, what does that equal? Root 13 over 2. And you don't have to rationalize again or re-rationalize. And what would be the reciprocal of cosine? Root 13 over 3. Okay, just use the, the first form, or you can just use the saying, the, the relationship, hypotenuse over adjacent, and look at the figure itself. The hypotenuse is root 13, adjacent side is 3, and that gives you your secant ratio. Okay, finally, the cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent, so it's 3 over 2. Okay. Questions on that? Let's take a look at one that happens in quadrant 2. Okay, so let's say we pick the point negative 1, 3. Alright, so the same first steps. Sketch or plot your point, sketch your angle, draw in your reference triangle. Your reference triangle is always just a vertical line from the point to the x-axis. So in this case, here's my triangle, which gives me my reference angle in here at the origin. Okay, now we label our pieces of information based on the coordinates of the point. So the x-coordinate is negative 1. Notice I include the sign. The y-coordinate is 3. And so when you're working with the Pythagorean theorem here to find your missing hypotenuse, the signs carry along. Okay, so we take a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 1 plus 9 equals c squared or 10 equals c squared. Extract the square root. So you get your hypotenuse to be root 10. It's always going to be a positive number. Okay, and then it's just a matter of evaluating your trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, as well as the reciprocal ratios. Okay, and when we do that, again, our sine is... Opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 over root 10, rationalize. Dividing by root 10 is the same as multiplying by root 10 and dividing by 10. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the same as multiplying by root 10, dividing by 10. The tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is just the value negative 3. Okay, find the reciprocals for these. Again, all you have to do is flip the fraction that's easiest to maneuver. Root 10 over 3 is my cosecant. Root, negative root 10, or root 10 over negative 1. Always write your negative signs in the numerator okay, and, and never include a fraction. So even if the negative was in the denominator, it needs to get moved up to the numerator. And then here you have negative 1 over 3. You don't need to do anything to simplify that. So this gives you the six trig ratios based on the point, the angle that passes through the point, negative 1, 3. Okay. All right, I want you guys to try one on your own. So you're going to try one in quadrant 4. Hey, I want you to see if you can find all six trig ratios for the point to 2, negative 5. Okay, step 1, plot the point and sketch your angle. Okay, step 2, create your reference triangle, the right triangle. The angle at the origin is your reference angle. Okay, and now we label the measures. The x-coordinate was 2, so this leg is 2. The y-coordinate, negative 5. We include the sign. And now it's just a matter of a Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus negative 5 squared equals c squared. We're going to find the hypotenuse. 4 plus 25 equals c squared. So 29, extract the square root, gives us our hypotenuse. Square root of 29. Again, the hypotenuse is always a positive value. Okay, and now it's just a matter of using SOHCAHTOA and filling in your trig ratio. So sine is opposite 
over a hypotenuse, rationalize your denominator. The cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse, rationalize the denominator. Okay, and then finally, your tangent is opposite over adjacent, nothing to simplify there. Okay, we now take the reciprocal ratios. Again, take the reciprocal of whichever fraction form is easiest to do that with. In the first example, you have uh, root 29 over negative 5. Again, notice the negative sign gets moved up to the numerator. Don't ever write a negative sign in the denominator of your fraction. The secant root 29 gets moved up to moves down and then finally you have 2 over 5 with a negative sign again in front or in the top of the fraction. Right. Are there any questions here on finding the trig ratios given a point?